Hi, everybody. My name is Mark Pope. I'm the lead pastor at the church. Good to be with you guys today. <laughs> hey, if you are uh, brand new with us today, uh, a couple things. One, we hope that you have a good experience here at the church. Uh, and also, if you'd like to know a little bit of the plan of what's happening, there's a little paragraph at the top of the handout you received when you walked in. That describes our plan for the evening. Uh, but this evening is a little bit special. In fact, I was just thinking about, we kind of have a packed service because we're not only doing what we typically do, which is uh, spend some time trying to honor God and worship. There'll be a time of teaching, but in the midst of the worship, we're also going to enjoy listening to, I think probably we'll benefit from listening to a, a few testimonies as well as celebrating uh, six folks getting baptized during uh, the worship. So we got a lot going on this evening. Turn to the person to your right and left and say, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> so how did they do? Did they look ready at all or not? Sort of? Maybe? Hey, I, I do want to give you, I want to give you one, hey, settle down. No. <laughs> I do want to give you one word of encouragement. A lot of the evening, um, at least uh, I think a, a big part of it, will be us enjoying uh, and observing, you know, the baptisms. And us enjoying and receiving from the testimonies. And it could, wow, you guys are all fired up. <laughs> Ushers, if you could take care of... Um, Oh, but here's the deal with this, with this initial song, and then we'll do the testimonies of baptism. As we're singing and worshiping, what I, could I encourage you that to not just observe other people worshiping and not just enjoy the music that might be coming off the stage, but I do think that we all have an opportunity to add our voice to the worship. And so, just a word of encouragement, especially if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, engage your heart, your mind in, in, uh, in worship. Make sense? Hope so, maybe. Why don't you stand? We're going to pray and we'll lead into an opening few minutes of worship. A lot going on, Father. Boy, I think a lot of good things are going to happen in the next hour. Uh, in the midst of it all, Father, we pray that it would be pleasing to you. We really, really, really hope that you'll look down and, and maybe have a smile or a warm feeling in your heart as you receive from us during this worship service. We ask your blessing on all the different parts of the service. And right now, I pray your blessing on the worship team as they lead us for just a little while. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
but for our own lives in case you've never in a while said it's been a while since you said to God by the way have your way in my life it's a great great simple prayer let's sing it two more times have your way this way and get ready to share your testimony. <laughs> guys can all make your way up, all the way up here and kind of stand here on the stage. Uh, I think, yeah, Sean will come first so if we can walk through that order or something close. Everybody say hi, Sean. Hi, Vineyard family. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. It was blind, but now I see. Amen. Amen. Last time I spoke those words in public was at my sentencing hearing in 2010. Uh, I dedicated my life to Jesus Christ a little less than a year prior, and he was guiding me into a new chapter of wholeness after 26 years of active addiction. Back then, I knew my life needed a significant change, and I knew that, based on my Christian upbringing, God could and would if he were sought. 
Philip Yancey, in his book, What's So Amazing About Grace, tells us that grace means there's nothing we can do to make God love us more, and grace means there's nothing we can do to make God love us less. Grace means that God already loves us as much as an infinite God can possibly love. Thank God for our God. I'm so grateful to him for all my blessings. I believe Father God guided me in many things back then, moving me in directions to become a better human being and bringing people into my life to help me and love me for who I was becoming. And it was in 2012 that he brought my family and me to the Vineyard Church. But I've also come to realize that I ignored our Heavenly Father's guidance with devastating consequences at times throughout my adult life. He said, stop, she's going to divorce you. Stop, you're going to lose your children. Stop, this is illegal and you will be arrested. Stop, you've put the people who love you through enough. Stop, this time you will lose everything all over again. Recent struggles in my life have proven to me that despite working a strong program of recovery, some key piece was missing. I attend Narcotics Anonymous meetings weekly. I offer myself up for a large amount of service work. I attend church each Sunday, but yet the darkness was able to invade a territory within me that I once considered to have been conquered. Once again, I was hearing, but I was ignoring. Sun Tzu says in The Art of War that if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. I desperately needed a deeper understanding of both the enemy I faced as well as of myself. I studied my life of the past 10 years and came to understand that what I lacked was the closeness with God that I once had attained, a 167 relationship with Father God and Jesus Christ. I began to change my way of living and of thinking and I began to hear him guide me again, only this time I obeyed. He said, get your butt back to celebrate recovery. Begin and end your day with prayer and study of the word. Become the man of God you were born to be and finally be baptized. As Dutch theologian and former Notre Dame professor, Henri Nguyen points out, God rejoices, not because the problems of the world have been solved, not because all human pain and suffering have come to an end, nor because thousands of people have been converted or are now praising him for his goodness. No, God rejoices because one of his children who was lost has been found. <laughs> I wasn't gonna cry until the amen. Too often in my life, I've been the one straying sheep, yet my shepherd continues to leave the 99 and pull me back to the flock. This is why I'm so deeply grateful to have the opportunity to be baptized today. Peter says in Acts 2, verse 38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God's forgiveness and salvation and unconditional love and his amazing grace are all contained in that big tub of water over there. How cool is that? It doesn't have to be. Everybody say hi, Mason. Hi. Step right up here, buddy. So I have grown up going to church and following Jesus, but... I've gotten older and started to play sports, and then I've been super busy with practices and games and stuff, so we haven't been going to church as much. But recently, I've started to grow back and coming every weekend, and I'm deciding to dedicate my life to Jesus. Are you nervous? Are you? Look at him. Look at all those scary people out there. No. Everybody say real quietly, hi, Jayla. See, wasn't that, they're so nice. Before I committed my life to Jesus, when I did a new skill in gymnastics, I felt like I would get hurt, and I would change my mindset to me thinking I can't do this. Now that I'm committed to Jesus, when I'm doing a new skill, I believe in myself, and I can trust my coach because I know that Jesus will keep me safe. 
I want to be baptized because we were sitting in church service and they were talking about baptism and whenever I heard the word baptism, I felt an instant feeling of happiness. Ever since I decided to get baptized, I feel like my life is complete and that I can forever be happy and loved by family, friends, and Jesus. I've always been dedicated to church and for the past month, I feel a bigger relationship with Jesus. Good job. Everybody say hi, Austin. Hey, everybody. Um, I wrote this in five minutes after a membership essential seminar and had no idea I'd be reading this this weekend at my baptism. So here it goes, short and sweet. I was baptized Catholic as an infant and attended Holy Cross School until my parents divorced. Through adolescence, I strayed from my faith and battled with addiction. Seeking recovery, I had found my way back to God and, and my faith. With my restored faith in Jesus, I've been able to start a new life and strive to learn God's will for myself. That's all I got. That's awesome. Thank you. Everybody say hi, Joe. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here today. <laughs> so, all right. So when growing up, I dealt with many difficult situations. However, I was never one to give up, and though part of me was always Christian, I had many obstacles to overcome to truly claim Christianity within my life. When I was younger, I was abused and did not have the strength or courage to admit what was happening. Throughout my childhood, I would attend church on occasion. However, just like school, my mind was not focused, and I would not absorb the message. In my teen years, I faced my abuse head on and got the help I long needed. In therapy, I went to church group and started taking more interest in the message from Jesus Christ. We would discuss how the Holy Spirit can help us through our therapy, how he inspires us, and we would sing songs such as the papaya song, also known as I Like Bananas, and one of my favorites, Shout to the Lord. We all need to shout to the Lord occasionally. However, he hears us no matter how quietly we speak to him. At each therapy session, we would say the serenity prayer, which helped me to realize that my past cannot be altered, but my future is in my hands, and if I let him, God will guide those hands. There have been many advocates that helped me along the way, but two that definitely stick out is Danum Hunt, who was unit charge on my therapy unit, and Mr. Manns, a teacher who got me on the right path in high school and also encouraged us to start the Fineo Club, which stands for failure is not an option. <clears throat> After therapy, I attempted to go to church at multiple locations. However, I never felt complete until my family and I found the vineyard. Is it the church? Is it my family attending with me? Maybe it's both. Yeah, I know, it is both. Besides, the vineyard has also become my family. Since giving my life to Jesus, I am feeling a sense of fulfillment, love, and strength to make the right decision, and even a passion to bring Jesus fully into my home and heart. In Hebrews 13, 8, I quote, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So I know I can give my life to Christ and he will be there to guide me as he did in therapy, as he did when I started coming here to the vineyard, right now as I give this testimony, and I know that he will be there for me tomorrow and forever. Thanks everyone. Everybody say, hi Becky. Hold on, just, just a second. Wait a minute. We'll let these people get seated first. That's okay. We got time. This service is going to go to about 1, 1 a.m. We got all kinds of time. Just some, some new person over here went, what? What did he say? I am not staying here that late. Okay. Everybody say hi, Becky. Hi. I gave up on the Lord a long time ago. The reason is because I thought... He was the one who took my dad from me. I felt as if my whole world had crashed right in front of my eyes. I had lost one of the most important people in my life in July 2011. Not even 10 months later, I lost my grandfather, who was really, 
who was one of the most important people I looked up to the most. My life crumbled again. I felt betrayed and unloved by God because two of the most important people in my life were gone. I know now that it wasn't God or Jesus that did this. It was the devil. After almost nine years of hating and not wanting anything to do with church or the Bible, I wasn't sure how or where my life was going to go. But in the last few months, there's been a voice saying, here I am. It took me a long time to listen to this voice. I knew my life needed to change. I'm still unsure what Jesus has in store for me, but I'm sure that I'm ready to stand up and say, here I am, Lord, take me into your hands and guide me. So, uh, awesome job you guys you guys can come around over here and uh, get ready for the actual baptism worship team is going to come back up but let me tell you just a couple of things that are going to be happening over here uh, a couple of the pastors will be in the baptismal as well as uh, um, for a couple individuals they have a significant person with them helping them get baptized when they get into the tub they will be asked three questions just so you know what's going on up there the first question will be something like this. Do you believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world? And they'll answer that question. The second question personalizes that. It'll be something like this. Is Jesus not only the Savior of the world, but is he your personal Savior? And then they'll answer that question. And the last question is a lordship question. It'll go something like this. Are you going to, as best you can for the rest of your life, live for God? And you know, the implication there is a daily trying to live for God. And if you fall, you'll get up and again try to live for God. And there's this idea of pursuing God for the rest of your life. And so those will be the questions that they will ask them. So right now, let me pray. Uh, by the way, you should be able to see what's going on uh, up here because the camera will be there. You can watch the screens or you can watch from where you are. Am I missing anything? You guys ready? You good, Austin? Okay, good. I just wanted to ask Austin if he's good. Let me pray. And uh, the worship team will. Music and stuff and baptism. It's a good moment. It's a good moment, isn't it? Let's pray. Father, it's just a privilege and an honor to be in a place where we get to see life change and we do not take it lightly. We do not take it lightly. So God, we thank you for these six. We thank you for the countless moments that you pursued them. We thank you for your grace. And especially right now, we thank you for what's probably been happening in the last several days or weeks it's this, again, personal calling to be close to you. It's just our privilege to be a little, little, tiny part of this. In Jesus' name, amen.